G'day everyone, it's Rob the Axeman here from Axeman's Family Fishing and Adventures. A short time ago I put a little bit of a promotion on my YouTube channel to uh, thank the, to get up to 100 subscribers and I had a little bit of a competition and someone won that competition uh, and his name is and he's asked that I either I'll make sort of a, a lure for him in a pilchard or silver whiting or something so I've gone with a pilchard pattern um, so the first step is basically draw it up I'm just drawing it up there I'm doing a 150 mil um, this is basically the shape of it so I've carved that out out of balsa um, which we're in this is the shape now um, it's going to be a very nice shape got the bib slot cut ready to go in um, I'm almost finished the sanding so um, about a week or so I'll probably have that all finished and we'll send it out and uh, he'll have the first ever out in public Axeman's lure um, it's going to be a, a very nice pilchard pattern so he's probably going to smash some a salmon or something along those like Taylor, those type of fish are really going to like this one. All right. So uh, look out for my next competitions. You know, it might be the 250 subscribers. We're getting about halfway there now. So uh, look, keep uh, watching the YouTube videos, and I'll show you uh, progression as we go along with this uh, this lure. What well up? So I started off with a 240 and I'm down to about a 400 now, just finishing it off, making sure it's nice and smooth. Any little imperfections or dents in it will stand out um, in the process of painting and putting the top coats on. So you really need to get it spot on at this time. Get all the little dents. This is balsa wood, so it's quite soft. Marks very, very easily at this point. But what we want is a floating bait. Um, and it will dive down, you know, probably three or four metres maximum. Um, so we want those surface fish like salmon and things like that for this little. So yeah, it's all sanded up now. It's looking pretty good. And um, I'm just about ready to uh, put in the bib. Now these bibs, I used to make them up myself. Um, but I find it's so much easier getting them perfection like these from a bloke called Jeff at Kingston Lures. Look him up on um, Facebook and um, online. He's got an online store as well, you can go and visit him. But the ones that he produces, reasonably cheap and um, fantastic, absolutely perfect. Um, it fits in there just like a dream. That's how it's going to look. Probably going to get, yeah, as I said before, probably three or four metres out of that that pilchard pattern. It's going to dive down nicely. It's going to have a really good action as well. So check him out, Jeff at Kingston Lures. All right, guys, um, at the stage now, the lure's all sanded. Um, I've attached the hardware uh, for the hook hangers. And now I'm going to seal the wood. Um, I'm using this one here. It's a sanding sealer. I'll probably do at least two, maybe even three coats, depending on... The, uh, the timber, it's being bolster, it's quite porous, so it might take a little bit. Now, I recommend wearing these masks, these P2s. All right, if you're doing any of this type of work, the fumes off this stuff or the dust off this stuff will get right into your lungs and it's no good. All right, so I recommend that you wear one of these and that's why I've got it on at the moment. I've got the, uh, the can open. I've just given it a bit of a stir and drop that right the way in to your first coat. Um, I do brush it on as well, but I like the first coat to be nice and thick. Just hang it up on a dryer in a second and um, attach uh, a drip hook to the last thing and everything, the majority of it will run off when it's hanging up. I'll, I'll leave this for at least 24 hours now to dry and set nice and hard, especially being such a thick first coat. And um, once that's done, we'll give it another light sand, um, we'll seal it again, and then we'll probably fit the, fit the bib, and then I'll start working out weights. Um, I like to seal it first, because then I can add the weights to it um, to see what depth and make it sit flat, and um, 
usually water tested at that stage as well. So we've got most of that off at the moment. So this little hanger, put through the last the hoop, and then I'll hang that up now on my rack, and that will dry off. And as you can see, it's already got a very nice coat ready to be sanded after 24 hours. Alright guys, till the next stage. Today folks, still working on uh, Adrian Malardi's um, competition winner's lure here. So we've got it now all sealed up. Um, put the hardware on the back and front of the hook hangers. Um, I haven't glued that in yet. What I'm going to do now is put some markers and um, drill some holes and we're going to put some lead weights in it just to make it sit nice in the water and sit down flat. And then that bib will take it, dive it down. So it's the next stage. So once you've marked out uh, where you want to put your holes, idea to put a pilot hole in first. Um, this softer timber can tear out pretty easily. So you want to put a little bit of pilot hole in first before you go to your bigger size. Probably going to do about a 10 mil. Got 10 mil holes. So we have three pilot holes there. Larger. <coughs> nice and slow. All right, so it's probably about halfway through that hole, and we'll put a couple of leads in there, and all the way along, just to sit down nice in the water, and um, be nicely weighted. our three holes we'll fill that up with lead now uh, once we've got some lead we'll glue it all in and over the top I'll just put some filler and we'll sand it off nice and smooth and um, once it's all smooth we'll be ready for painting all right so you can see there we've got our lead in the holes now I just use split shots it's nice and easy because the holes round anyway with a, from the drill bit so I've got two in there two in there one in there and that should just um, sit nicely in the water now and we'll bog that up and sand it off and we'll be ready for paint. Okay, so we've got it all bogged up, put plenty on so I can sand it back and make it nice and round and smooth. Um, probably leave that at least for 24 hours now until it sets nice and hard. And um, then we'll sand it back and we'll start to put some paint on it. So, um, we've got the lure here that uh, we're making for Adrian and um, I'm just sanding off the bog, fill in those holes, nice and smooth. And um, once I've sanded that off, I'll probably um, just attach the bib, glue the bib in, and we'll do a quick water test just to check that it's swimming okay. Um, and once that's done, okay, we'll um, do some painting. So there we have it, it's all, um, all cleaned up now, the bog's all sanded off, just glued in the, um, in the bib. So what we'll do now, just go quick, do a quick water test and uh, check it out, make sure it's swimming okay. So just uh, adding the hooks and the rings and everything because obviously when you water test it, um, the extra weight makes a difference. So just to hang all the hooks and everything when you first test it. So that's how it's going to be when it's swimming. Obviously when you paint and we're doing our, um, our top coats, probably do two or three top coats, it's going to make a little bit of difference in the extra weight too. But this is going to be a floating lure. Um, it's going to sit on the surface and then once it's, once it's wound in, it's going to dive down deep and hopefully we're going to get a bit of action like this as well. So we'll go do a water test. Alright, so we're going to do the now.
Okay, so that's all taped up and now ready to do the base coat. Okay, so we've got the lure here. Um, these are called helping hands. Um, you can get them on eBay for about 10 bucks. Must if you're going to be painting any lures or making lures. Just make it so much easier to get onto and hold it in place while you're painting. You can get right underneath, do both sides. So basically I'm just going to use a, um, this is Createx, this is what I'm using. I'm just using a transparent base to start with, just to chuck a couple of coats on to uh, make sure it's all sealed and all good. start with a white base coat. Okay, so yeah, should have a mask on uh, when we're doing this. The P2 ones are the best obviously for fumes and paint. So I'm using the Createc, just a opaque white, which is a solid white. And give this a good coat all over. By putting white on first, it makes the other colors sort of pop, so. got a good uh, white base coat on that one now. Uh, I'll leave that to dry and then I'll put a, um, a clear coat over the top to seal it all off and um, give depth to the new colours that are coming onto it. Um, you can probably see a few little dints and imperfections on these lures but um, there was a guy that taught me how to do it and he said at the end of the day mate it's a fishing lure it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. These are handmade they're not mass produced not by machines so you're going to have little dents here and there and they're not perfect but you get them as best as you can. All right. So um, yeah we'll do a clear coat on that one, let it dry, it takes 24 hours for that to dry properly and then uh, we'll start doing some more paint. So just about finished, uh, done the silver underneath, the platinum and the blue on the top for this one. So we're just about ready to let that dry now. Focus. Uh, let that dry and then we'll do another clear coat and then we'll put the detail on that with some uh, dots and eyes and etc and then we'll do another clear coat and we'll just about be done send it out to Adrian
Okay, so um, I finished the lure that I made for the competition winner, which was Adrian Malardi, uh, for my 100 subscribers. That's the lure there, all finished. Just water testing it now. I ended up colouring the bib, made it into a pilchard pattern, and um, called it a Mally Pilly. It's a 150 mil. I've uh, got some strong hardware on there, a bit of blood splatter. And um, just to water test it now, but it uh, looks pretty good.